Hi, my name is Cassandra Stelter, and thank you for joining me. This is part of my series where I explore different ways to use Microsoft Teams in a virtual emergency operations center setting. Today, I'm going to be talking about how to replace the ICS 214 form and the improvement plan in the after action report using the Microsoft Lists app. Hopefully, this will inspire you to find some other creative ways to automate some of your processes in the virtual EOC. So here I have my virtual EOC set and up across the top of my general channel, you can see I have an activities log tab. When I click on that, this is going to open a Microsoft SharePoint list that I have configured to look like an incident activity log or an ICS 214. Now, in my experience, I've discovered that the paper 214, which looks more like a diary, isn't very useful for my teams. They might still be really useful for your incidents, so you shouldn't replace them if you like them. But I found that it created a lot of extra paperwork for me. I didn't usually have a documentation unit to help me out, so I ended up having to compile a lot of information into my narratives. In addition, I was repeating a lot of information because I really needed a way to provide an ongoing status board from all of the different participants on what was going on. So I combined them all together into this SharePoint list. Uh, when we look at it, you can see the activity of what we're reporting on, what kind of an update it is, what the urgency for addressing the issue is if it needs follow-up, or just who needs to pay attention to it. What is its status? When did it start? If we needed a location, where was it? If it needs to be assigned to somebody, who needs to follow up on it? And then of course, who reported it? This new feature also allows people to attach photos and videos, which can be particularly helpful when tracking activities, or you can attach documents. When you go to add a new item, it's very simple. You just click on new, and then you fill out all of the prompts. You're probably noticing that I actually adapted a template for this sample, and so not everything is completely shifted over. I'm gonna show you how to do that in a minute. The beautiful thing about using this Lists app is that this translates to the mobile teams beautifully. So if you have people out in the field that are working to provide status reports, they can do that right from their mobile device, such as a tablet or a phone, without losing the functionality of the list. So how easy is it to do this? Oh my goodness, so simple. You're going to come up over here to the Add a Tab feature, hit the plus, and then you're going to pick the Lists app from the options. When you do that, it's just going to say save, which is fantastic. And then you have the option of coming up here and renaming it. So we're going to call it test list so we don't get confused. Now it's going to ask me, do I want to create a new list or add an existing list? If you're going to add an existing list, it's just going to show you the same list you've already made twice. So this is really helpful if you want to, for example, post your 214 in a different channel. But we want to make a new list. There's a couple of different ways to do this. We can create a template that Microsoft has provided for us and then go in and customize it. We can start from scratch. We can actually upload an Excel file if we have an existing list that we want to import, or, and this is my favorite feature, I can import it from an existing list. So if I want to make a new action log, say for a different incident or a different emergency, I can do that without copying over all of the information. So we're going to call this one a test so that we don't end up with two. This is a second action log. For demonstration purposes, we can still customize all of the features here. Hit create, and now you're going to see when it pulls up the list, it's starting from a blank one. It didn't affect the existing list at all. It let me start over, but it did carry over all of my formatting. Whoops, that was the wrong. There we go. So when I come here to make a new one, we can say test the list, and we want it to be new, and maybe it's a significant event with very high urgency, uh, and I think that's actually all we have to put in here. So we hit go, and you can see that my color coding that was custom carried over, which is really, really great. Okay, so how did I go in and edit this template to make it what I want? The first thing you're going to want to do is, first of all, remember that all of these lists are actually just SharePoint. So you're going to click the little more button here and say open in SharePoint. So that's going to then bring you into uh, your browser. There we go. And when you're looking at your browser, you're going to have your list here and you're going to head all the way up over here to the list settings. 
From the list settings, you can change its name, you can change how it's validated, you can change permissions. I'm not going to go into that tonight. Um, you can definitely download all of the information to check this out. But this is where you're going to change the columns that come with your default forms or your default lists and you can change the kind of data that is input. You can get really fancy here if you want to. You can make custom created values, all sorts of things. You can change the order that they appear, and you can create custom views so that people can filter and view your information in different ways. This would be a really long tutorial, so I'm not gonna go into it today, but there are tons of great videos available out there on how you can customize and update a form. What I am going to show you is some simple formatting you can do. So if you really like these little color buttons, you would go to the column, the settings, the formatting, and then you would do the choice pills, right? And that's going to make the little pills toggle on and off. And if maybe you don't love the colors, you could come in and you could customize them to be kind of, kind of whatever you want and hit save. You can also do that for, oops, excuse me, that's not what I meant to do. You can also do that with the formatting for conditions. So you could say you only want to see the values that are shown as information only. This is also helpful if you're doing data, right? So if you want anything over a certain dollar amount to be highlighted in red, you could do that. So make sure you play with this and get the list to look exactly the way you want. Okay, now let's talk about how to replace our improvement plan. I have an after action channel over here. I always recommend adding an after action channel to any of your virtual EOC settings because you wanna start documenting your lessons as quickly as possible. Up here, I've got my improvement plan tracker. And when I open it, you're gonna see it's just another Microsoft list, right? When I go to create a new item, I have all of the core capabilities listed so I can select my capability. I can set the priority of the improvement item. Is it a new blocked, right? All of the lovely things that we wanna see. And you can change these. If these words don't make sense for your organization, change it to the, the ones you want. And I'll, remember, I'll show you how to do that again, but that's in that SharePoint option. What was the objective that it was tied to? So remember, if you're doing an exercise improvement plan, then this is gonna be pulled from your exercise guide. And if you are evaluating an incident, then you should be able to pull this from your incident action plan. Then you're going to enter your action item, who it's assigned to. You can select the mission area that you want it. You can even customize when it was assigned and when it's due so you can tell whether or not the action item is overdue. So here are a couple samples on how they're finished. So the objective is to ensure displaced families are cared for. The action item, remember our action items are supposed to be very specific and written in the SMART format. So establish emergency housing for 40 families within 48 hours of the incident. It's a high priority for this sample, but it's in progress. And of course, because this is an EOC of one, it's assigned to me. And I can see that that incident is three days old. So this is a great way to help centralize and track all of your actions that are due as part of your after action review. Again, if you wanna customize it, you're just going to open it in SharePoint. Whoop, there we go. And same thing, go up into the settings menu, click the list settings, and then you can come down here and change all of these areas. So for example, uh, obviously this list didn't come with the core capabilities. So I went in and created a new column, called it capability, made it a choice, listed all of the core capabilities, made it a drop down menu. You could make this really, really fancy if you wanted to. You could make it so that when you first pick the mission area, it will filter all of the capabilities just to show you the capabilities for that mission area. Or if your objectives are really well mapped out in your EOP, you could pre-filter it so that the objectives are pre-populated into your event or incident. There's a lot of really cool stuff you can do here. Uh, again, I don't have time to show you that tonight. Spend some time on YouTube or your favorite video platform looking up different ways. These are obviously not the only applications for using lists, so I would encourage you to spend some time exploring all of the different templates available to you through Microsoft and through best practice of other people. There are all kinds of resources you can go to download new templates as well, so make sure you check that out. But definitely spend some time playing with each of these. You may discover all kinds of cool workflows that you didn't even know were possible. So to summarize, 
When you are using the Lists app in Microsoft Teams, you can actually create templates for all of your important ICS forms. Tonight I showed you the 214 action log and the improvement plan or action tracker for your AAR, but you could also use this for resource requests, for timesheets, really anything you can imagine. The templates that are provided by Microsoft can be easily customized by opening that list in SharePoint and editing the list properties. So if you're not sure where to start, start with a template and edit it from there. And then, of course, remember, when you are adding a list, if you choose to create from an existing list, it's going to make a copy of the list, which is great for templates. And if you are going to add an existing list, it's going to show the same list, including all of the content in that list, somewhere else, which is great for those custom channels. So, do you have any questions or feedback about this video, or would you like to follow up on any of the things that I showed you? Or, if you're just interested in checking out the other work that I've done, make sure to follow me on LinkedIn, and you can send me any messages there. Thanks so much.